Hey there, Nick Juntakis here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a command line tool called ENV Substitute. And if you're running native Linux, WSL, or Mac OS, then this command is going to be available by default because it is a standard GNU tool. And this one is really useful when you want to dynamically generate config files, but you just want to swap around a couple properties or values in that config based on environment variables being set. This could be really useful if you're working with a tool like Nginx or Kubernetes where, you know, you have these pretty substantial config files, but you just might want to swap out a couple of different values in those configs, get them generated with those values, and then run them. So in this video, we're going to go over doing that when it comes to setting up uh, a Kubernetes cluster, but it's not going to be very specific to Kubernetes at all. But before we get there, let's just try it out on the command line first, where we can do something like hello person, and then we can just pipe that into env substitute. And when we run this one, we're not going to get any value here for person because right now on my shell, this environment variable is empty. So if I just try to echo person, we get back nothing. So what we actually need to do here is export person to be, I don't know, some name, right? Like hello Nick or something like that. And if we rerun the same command now, notice after we pipe it into env substitute, it is going to take all of this. It's going to be like, oh wait, I know what to do with the person environment variable. That's going to be the value of Nick. Great. And then here we are. So that's the, you know, the very basic use case of how this works. Uh, so now let's take a look here at a config file and just basically go over the real world use case of how I ended up using this tool here. And, you know, we're going to go over this a little bit, but it's not going to be anything specific to Kubernetes or whatever. But long story short, I am using a tool called EKSCTL, which is a way to spin up a Kubernetes cluster on AWS very quickly here with just, I don't know, 20 or 24 lines of YAML, right? Uh, I'm actually probably not going to end up using this tool in the end, but this led me down an interesting path. So. I am doing some client work where they wanted to set up this cluster on US West 2, which is basically a region of AWS, but I'm on the East Coast. So I wanted to set up a test cluster in my own region in US East 1. And you know, in my case, uh, the instance types and the number of instances that we run are going to be different between my environment and my client's environment. They're going to be running much bigger servers and a lot more of them, just, uh, you know, not a couple of them like we see here. But I didn't want to go down the route of having to basically duplicate this config file twice and then just change out little things like the region or the instance type or, you know, the number of instances that I want to run. And at the moment, this tool, EKSCTL, it doesn't support the idea of just throwing in, you know, some type of like template tags like this, which you might see using some other uh, YAML based things like Ansible, where you can just use Jinja tags. And, you know, if you happen to be using something like Helm with Kubernetes, you know, it has its own syntax language, but, you know, that is not supported with EKSCTL. But we can use ENV substitute to kind of get that benefit. So like, imagine if we can just do something like, you know, set the region here and then run it through ENV substitute, make sure that we have the region defined in an env file and it's like sourced and exported and ready to go then we can see that it is going to work very nicely and uh, actually if i open up this other uh, cluster tpl file here this one does have a couple of environment variables being set here so things like the cluster name the default region that it's going to be in as well as the cluster version and even things like the instance type as well as the number of instances these are all just environment variables right i'm just using the squiggly syntax here instead of just uh, you know doing it like this but you know both of them technically will work although it is preferred to use the squigglies here. Uh, I've done videos in the past about the differences between that. Not important for the sake of this video, but you know, now that we have this actual config file here, then we can run it uh, through env substitute and just see what the output is. So I can run env uh, substitute like this and just pop in this AWS cluster TPL one. And uh, then we can just see the output here, which is going to be empty for a number of things, right? We have no name, region, version, basically all those environment variables are empty. But that makes sense, right? Because going back to what we just done, did on the command line, uh, if we don't export out these uh, environment variables, then I don't know, env substitute is not gonna like read your mind. Uh, these value, you know, these environment variables need to be available in your shell. So I can just source an env file here, rerun the same command, and suddenly we just templated out this file here. And we can see there's the US East one, the example name for the cluster. We have a couple small instances and two, two. And the reason this one works is because I have an ENV file here where I just exported these uh, environment variables, right? I could have done this on the command line directly, just typing these out individually, but it's a pretty nice common practice to have something like an env file around, and you can always just ignore that from version control, but then also have like an env.example file that you can commit up. You know, you can potentially set even uh, the default values here for the example one. That's gonna be easier for the client to use, right? In my case, like I'm gonna set this like US uh, West 2 for them. But yeah, that's basically how this one works here. And you know, what's interesting uh, about the EK 
PICTL tool and I guess other tools in general is, you know, just having this get output like this is kind of cool, but then it's like, well, you know, how do I actually get that into the EKSCTL tool or other tools? And uh, it really depends on the tool that you're using here. But uh, actually, let me clear this one. And let me just rerun this here. So instead of just uh, making this get printed out to standard out, we can actually pipe that into EKSCTL. Like, let's say we want to create the actual cluster. You know, this is specific to this command here, not super important. But for the config file, like normally you can just type in the config file name that you'd like, but you can also use dash here, which is basically a Unix convention to uh, read this file from standard in. So, you know, we're just dealing with Unix pipes here, right? So it's like we're taking the output of uh, env substitute here, sending that to input as EKSCTL, and now that's actually going to be the value of the config file here. Now, I actually don't want to create this cluster on my system or not my system on, on my AWS account. So I'm going to do the dry run here just to see like the output of what we get here. So if we scroll up here, there's a lot of stuff that got changed, but that's due to EKS ETL. Like this is about exactly what it would do if it were to set up uh, a server or a cluster on EKS with AWS. But if we go through here, we can see, look, the instance type is T2 small. There's a min and max size of two. There's a specific version. Uh, everything is good to go and it's ready to go. And if I didn't do the dry run and actually ran this command, then in about 10 or 15 minutes, we would have a working um, Kubernetes cluster on EKS. So that's basically how that works. And uh, if I rerun this command here, I'm not going to like rerun it specifically, but there's like another variant of doing this as well. So instead of sending this as uh, input to another command, you can always just use the power of your shell here and just redirect this to something like, you know, hey.yaml or something like that. And now if I go here, we can see there's a third file here now called hey.yaml and uh, we have the output of that. So, you know, there's a couple options of what you want to do here. Not really specific to env substitute, but it could be handy in certain use cases if you want to write out a file based on the results of that being processed. So that's basically how this tool works. Now, before I wrap this one up, there is one little interesting gotcha around this one, where if we take a look here, notice how there are no default uh, values for these environment variables. So, you know, I can't just put in something here uh, like like this, and, and this simply won't work. Now, this would work on the shell because your shell will interpret this and be like, oh, okay, well, you know, if this happens to be unset, then let's just use the default value. But the env substitute command, uh, I don't know why, maybe just maybe it was developed before uh, the shell was capable of doing this. It just won't process that at all. So yeah, there is one downside in that uh, you do need to actually define every single environment variable. You know, that's why if I go back to the env file here, you know, all of them are defined here. Now, there is uh, a way to get around that, sort of. I mean, there is a custom env substitute command that was rewritten in Go by someone here, you know, 362 stars, whatever. But um, if you wanted to install this one, it works exactly the same as the, the pre-built env substitute that just comes with, you know, Linux and Mac OS. But it also has uh, this extra functionality where it can handle the defaults. Now, I haven't gone through the motions of installing and using this tool because, I don't know, setting the defaults really isn't too big of a deal. Maybe it's a little bit nicer to be explicit to have them anyways. But uh, yeah, if you really, 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 really want a default set, then you do have this out here to use this one. I'll leave a link to this one in the description in case you want to check it out. But on that note, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about using this command, uh, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps a lot. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.